Merci au Musée de West Baton Rouge de soutien financier cet épisode. Et toi, moi je suis quelqu'un, mon nom c'est Thierry Auguste et moi ici avec Monsieur Jean Audouin qui, qui a appelé Galopé pour euh, l'office à l'action. Bonjour Monsieur. Bonjour, bonjour. So, uh, I know we both can speak Creole and, and French, but I believe we should do this in English for a little bit. Oh, no, we should do this in English because you speak it way better than I do. <laughs> I am not about to have no conversation about the stuff I want to talk about in Creole. <laughs> oh, man, it'll be so hard. It'll be so hard. So I, I was watching one of your uh, one of your, one of your commercials and you're like, let's let's bring let's make Lake Charles better than Lafayette again. Explain to me. Well, you know, it wasn't me. It wasn't make it better than Lafayette, per se. It was, I'm tired of losing to Lafayette. <laughs> losing to Lafayette. And when it, well, I know just recently, y'all just had two hurricanes hit Lafayette. And that that has to be, that's, I know that's very devastating. And then with this new yeah. freeze that just happened. So what's the environment like in Lake Charles at the moment? Man, uh, oh, it's... You know what? I'm going to turn around so you can see it. I'm going to turn around so you can see it. When you said, what's the environment like? I want you to see it. Uh, all right. You see this? That's a tree down. No, that's a whole bunch of stuff. That's just devastation. That's a, that used to be a house. See the blue roofs. That's another tree in the yard. That's that's what it's like being here. A constant reminder. A constant reminder that we just had two hurricanes, and now we got people who um, whose pipes burst in their homes. We have people who were kind of living in their homes with generators, but they had like holes in their roofs and stuff like that. Um, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's something, something to see. So hurricane season's right around the corner. And as a mayor, what, what, what are you going to be able to do when that comes around? Well, first of all, uh, we have a lot of stuff that we, uh, should have learned from the last two hurricanes. And, uh, I would take all that information that we, that we should have collected if there wasn't collected then what I would do is get the department heads who were, uh, who were active during those two hurricanes and we would plan, we would, we would plan for it. Like do worst case scenarios, best, you know, best case scenarios, and then make, uh, make plans accordingly. You know, for instance, like this, this freeze, um, this freeze happened uh, and we knew two weeks ahead, but there was no plan. And you know what I'm saying? I know, I know a lot of people left Lake Charles as well. Because uh, there's oh, many people over here. Yeah, a lot of people are gone. And a lot of people are gone, man. That's just like what happened with New Orleans. So how how would y'all be able to bring all these people back and build again? Well, to get we first of all, we gotta um we gotta have somewhere for them to stay. So we gotta address the housing issues. We gotta address housing for them. We gotta address jobs. Right now, um You know, the stats were saying that uh, we're at an 18% uh, unemployment rate. And in North Lake Charles, we're at like a 45% unemployment rate. Cool. And so that's got to be something that we work on because, you know, if the people don't have jobs, what are they going to come back to? All right, all right. You know and what I'm saying? Know, and I know with, um, because my sister, And actually, both my sisters lived in Lake Charles, and they don't want to go back. And oh, so, man. Well, <laughs> we got to bring them back, man. 
<laughs> they got to come back. But see, and that, but see, that's that's another reason why I'm running, man. Because um, we 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 have people like your sisters who are probably very very, um, they're probably very talented, and they probably have gifts that we need to have here in the city, right? But if we don't have opportunity for them, then they're going to leave. So we've got to we've got to address that the lack of opportunity. We got to try to keep our best and brightest here. And we do that by having the jobs and the careers and investing in those people to help them stay. And, you know, that's what I would do. That's what I'm planning on doing when I'm married. And I, I understand that the plant industry is like very big in Lake Charles. That's that what, what the majority of people go to for work. And I, I also understand that plants are also becoming decline, declining in Louisiana. So, so what other jobs can we create here? Well, now the good news about Lake Charles is uh, the last time we had a, um, a financial downturn in the country, Lake Charles didn't necessarily see that downturn. We, we, we had effects of it, but it didn't affect us like it affected most of the country because we have petrochemical industry. So whenever the oil industry takes a dip, we take a dip, but not as, as big of a hit as say a Lafayette or you know somewhere like that that has that is totally and completely dependent on oil services. We have we're we're doing petrochem and we're not as affected by the downturn as you know as other people are. Right. So I'm not I'm not necessarily worried about that because we'll be okay. Um, and the other the other fact is in Louise in Lake Charles, the number one employer single employer of people in Lake Charles is the school board. School board and. Uh, so we just got to keep schools open and a lot of our people will be okay. The second, uh, the, 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 but the number one industry, like you said, is petro, is, is the plants, the petrochemical and all the other plants that we have in the area. Um, but we, we just have to, we just have to look for alternative industries. We got to look again, like Lafayette, <laughs> right? Lafayette, uh, they, they, we have an opportunity to have the all service industry and we turned it down. And Lafayette said, I'll take it. They took it and they blew up. But they weren't, they 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 weren't so short-sighted as to not um not make accounting for it. After that first hit they took, they started then trying to diversify their portfolios. And Lafayette now has other industries that uh that they deal with that that sort of not so dependent on uh on the oil stuff. I mean I personally, what? huh? I know with Lafayette, a lot of people, a lot of companies gravitate towards Lafayette because of the culture. And you have the French speakers and the Creole speakers there. So is that something that you would like to use? 100%. 100%. I definitely want to use it. Uh, because I want Lafayette took Lafayette took the opportunity to be uh, the Cajun capital, and I feel like Lake Charles can be the uh, Creole capital because all the Zydeco all the Zydeco artists come from all the major Zydeco artists come from our area. So you know, we, we can tap on that because that's what that's what Lafayette did with the Cajun. And I, I've been proposed that. And that's why when I formed the Creole Hall of Fame, I formed it here in Lake Charles, because I want this to be the center for all things Creole, you know. Probably, you know, my um, my brother in law, Jamie Romain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> from like from Lake Charles, grew up with all them rusty Metoyer and all of them. Yeah, man. Yeah. And it's you're a part you started the Creole Hall of Fame and this is my first time actually hearing about that. So oh, I really? Want, yeah. I want to know a little bit more about that. Well, we we had two we had two um two classes already. And uh we we inducted two classes and then uh I got my Grammy nominations in 2019 20 well 2018 2019. So I wasn't able to do uh, a class in 2019 because I was rolling with the Grammy stuff. And then 2020 hit and you know what happened in 2020. 
And so it's still, we are still a 501c3. We are still taking donations for it. Uh, and we're going to try to have a class as soon as we can, um, you know, to keep everything going. The, the long-term goal for it is to have a physical building uh, where we can house uh, memorabilia from the uh, people who have been inducted. And uh, we want to have language class so we can get as fluent as you are in Creole. Uh, because I was, I had started uh, an initiative, a language initiative, um, but I couldn't find people to help me keep it going. And I noticed that whenever I didn't say, hey, we're having this, that it didn't happen. And so that was like a whole bunch of pressure. And then when I, so when I got, I was running, running the roads for the Grammy stuff and it just kind of fell off to the side. And I'm like, but y'all, y'all got to understand something. I need y'all's help because these older people, our elders are passing away and we're going to lose the dialect. And then now I'm not I'm not as I'm not necessarily as worried now because uh, after doing some research, I realized that the Cajun dialect and the Prairie Creole dialect is pretty much the same. The different dialect is the um, the um, uh, around Bro Bridge and Annapolis. Uh, come on, help me out. Yeah. Well, we in Annapolis' we call it flat French. Yeah, no, no, but it's it's called. Um, Kudivini. Uh, there we go. There we go. I, I, I had a, I had to switch over from mayor mode to music to French mode to culture mode. But yeah, so the Kudivini. But then and then with Kudivini, they've done a great job of preserving and promoting that. So I I, I felt less pressure to um to feel like we were going to lose something. The only pressure I had was being able to have a full conversation with my dad in Creole, and that's the thing that I that I kind of you know I kind of you know, so, you know what I'm saying. So us on our side, we have a hard time just trying to get more, more advertisements, more, more stuff in French and Creole because I'll, I'll, there's a lot of people who still speak. It's just they don't do it. And well, so, have- uh, I'm right now. I'm in Ascension Parish, and that's obvious. Oh, yeah. We don't. Yeah, that's out. That's but out. my people, they're in Saint Landry Parish. Right. They still speaking it over there. Mm-hmm. And even here in Ascension, they still speak. It's just that it's well hidden. Uh, in Baton Rouge, a lot of people still speak well hidden. And so, yeah, because I, I went to LSU, and I, yeah, I mean, other than the people that I knew that went to that church over there by Southern, and the one downtown, you know, the, the uh, other than a few people in those churches, it wasn't. It was definitely buried, because yeah. I was there for eleven years. And I don't, I don't remember seeing nobody promoting the Creole culture, you know, like that. Yeah, and um, when I saw, because I recently started watching all this, and I'm, and I was looking at your um, commercials, and I was looking at the commercials when they were having the um, judge runoffs and around the Brobridge area. And I'm yep. like, okay, they're, they're now using they're not, they're now using French and Creole again. But then I'm like, okay, who's genuine about it? That's what I well, really you know. Want. There's there's a there's an element of pandering to all of it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I I did it because it's who I am and it's my culture. Right. Um, but but I also did it because I know the old people will connect with it, and those people like me who are from the culture and of the culture are like, okay, okay, he's he he ain't he ain't shame of it. You know, and- he ain't shame. And I know in Lake Charles, because this was an uh, issue of um, my sisters, that there wasn't any French immersion schools in that area. Oh, no, they got we got we got French immersion big time here. Because my, my sister wanted to put her kids in it, but they did. They just didn't have any. It's at Prion Lake. It's at Prion Lake and Gillis. The, the, those were the two main schools, Prion Lake uh, Elementary and Gillis Elementary, because I put my son through it. Oh, huh. that's, that's, that's I didn't know. Hey. that. All you gotta do is ask. <laughs> we we have big French immersion here. It goes all the way through high school too. And how do you think the school board responded to most of it? Well, they had it. They supported it. Okay. As a matter of fact, if you go, Prion Lake was is one of the um one of the better schools in Lake Charles, better elementary schools in Lake Charles, and they have it now. Whenever my son was in, they didn't have a high school program, so they lost it after middle school. S. J. Welch had it, uh, and then uh, then they actually then brought it. To I think Barb, I think Barb had the immersion program, um, but yeah, I think it's still in high school. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that, but I know it's still in the elementaries. And I know, I know. Well, Barb took a hit with the with the hurricane, but they they're open back up now. So right. That's, 
that's a good thing. Uh, but tourism is not only tourism with COVID, but tourism with all the destruction that happened. That's something that really could bring a lot of money to Lake Charles when oh, everything's back and running. Def oh, definitely, man. Definitely. And what what face is going to be shown when it comes to tourism? Because that's also important as well. Well, I mean, um, right now the state of Louisiana has three commercials uh, talking about come and visit Lake Charles and sign up for your LouisianaTravel.com, your vacation. I'm one of the three commercials. <laughs> I did the music. I did the music, the voiceover, and I'm in the commercial. Yeah, they can't. Oh, they I can't run it. They can't run it right now because I'm running for mayor. Right. But once I finish, win or lose, they're gonna pop, kick it up back, kick it up again, and Lake Charles is gonna be no different. You you feel that um, you being a musician has helped you throughout this run, not oh, run off throughout this race. Yeah, one hundred percent. Because I'm used to being on stage. Um, well, the first thing that's helped is that the people, the people of the city, know my name. Uh, especially after getting, they knew my name before, but after getting the two Grammy noms, people who didn't know, they know now. And then after being on um, Good Morning America, talking about the, uh, the the hurricane and stuff and playing accordion, you know, they some people have they who had heard that now they got to see. Um, but just being able to articulate articulate myself, not being scared to be on camera, not being scared to be in front of people, that's invaluable. And the fact that I already had a name saved me a lot of money yeah. uh, as far as the um, as far as the campaign is concerned because that's money I didn't have to spend to get people to know my name. So my number one, my number one challenge as a, as a, a mayoral candidate is to get people to see me as something more than just the guy that plays accordion. And when you were at LSU, um, what did you study in? Oh, I studied, I was a general studies major. Uh, and the reason, the reason it happened in general studies is because I went in and I was going to go to physical therapy school. Um, I was paying my own way. And so I had to work and I was in the marching band. So I had like two or three jobs. I look back on it now. I don't know how I did it. I have no idea how I did it. I'm talking three, two or th three jobs, uh, maybe four. Cause I was, I was still playing Zydeco. I was in LSU's marching band and I worked in the casino and I the casino in the cafeteria. And then at one point I worked in the cafeteria and, uh, catering. And so, you know, I was hustling, but uh, so so um, uh, physical therapy, it was 2.7 was the minimum GPA. But then after I took the requisite physics class in the spring, that next fall, they were only accepting 4.0s with 3000 hours of community service of service in a, a physical therapist's office. And I couldn't go and give that time. Well, I didn't I didn't want to because I wouldn't have been able to survive. So couldn't is always relative. You can always do something. It's just whether you're willing to go through it to get it. And I wasn't willing to go through it and be homeless or whatever so that I could get that time. <laughs> you know. As 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 future mayor, if you win, as future mayor, what when areas when you win, which areas are you going to focus on the most? Man, first of all, I'm going to focus on I'm going to keep focusing on this recovery. Uh, we got to focus on housing. Uh, something that was that I thought that was a Lafayette problem that we were winning versus Lafayette in. Uh, Lafayette has a homeless issue downtown. Uh, and I didn't think we really had a homeless issue until the freeze hit and somebody brought it to my attention that we have a, we have folks who are homeless that we needed to help. So I, you know, I was on, I was on the ground helping, uh, helping to put people in hotel rooms and helping get them some food so they can, they didn't have to go travel to get it. And, so now it's in my it's in my my frame of reference. So now I'm gonna try to help get that. Uh, there was there was an effort to get a homeless uh, situation uh, shelter situated at this particular church. So I'm gonna partner with them and help you know see what I can do to lend get the city's help or or, or my you know my celebrity status celebrity <laughs> status my connections you know to help get it done. Uh, wow, I don't know what that noise is. Uh, so, so that, so there's that, there's a continuing, figure out the, uh, the housing situation and help all these small businesses get back on track, uh, help them get back on track and basically just make sure that the city's running right. We have an infrastructure, we have an infrastructure problem. We've got, uh, we've got to go back and check out our drainage, make sure that our water and, and like I said, with the hurricanes, it's it, it, the hurricanes exposing 
the fact that we have issues uh, in the city. This freeze has exposed the fact that we have issues in the city. Um, we've got to really take a hard look at our water uh, water delivery um, and and make that a priority so that what happened this past time never happens again. So uh, I know in central Louisiana, uh, they didn't really take a hit economically because everybody went to support the local businesses. But the rest of Louisiana really didn't support local businesses and did take big hits. So, uh, with, with COVID? With COVID. Okay, with COVID. Okay. And so as a mayor, what can the mayor do to promote local businesses and make and get people to support more local businesses instead of the big chain businesses? Well, as mayor, I would have to get all of them support because they all help the city. But as the mayor who comes from a small business perspective, they always have a special place in my heart. And so I've been doing it as, as Sean Ardwin, the artist, I've been promoting small businesses through my influence for years. So the difference is I'll be from the office of the, of the mayor promoting it. And one thing I wanna do is I wanna establish a, a small, a small um, a economic development arm of the city for small businesses so that they're specifically tasked with helping grow and um, and start small businesses in the city. So like whenever the Chamber of Southwest goes out and get a big business, then we'll have that, that, um, that arm of the city looking at that business and seeing what kinds of businesses we need to get to complement and service that big business and then connect those businesses with the big business. And I know, um, and I, I go to Lake Charles all the time because I got to go to Houston sometimes. And then- right, right. And so I, I like stopping at the little beach area, but you know, that little beach area is not always the cleanest. <laughs> well, the, and, and one way you do that is uh, there's, there's a guy who has a, uh, who has a, 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 um, a wave runner business that he wants to start and he put it on the beach. And so, you know, if there's a beach business that we can get, then we need to uh, look at that and, and make sure he can be open so that that's a that's an attraction to it and we keep that clean. It's all a part of the budget. We just got to do it. I inspect what I expect. So if it's already in the budget, then we just got to do what we know to do and be proactive versus reactive. Don't go try to clean the beach up when we have an event coming. Keep the beach clean. It's simple. It ain't rocket heart surgery. And what are the what are the areas that have been or not or like not areas like sector areas, but like areas such as communities and residents that have been hit before COVID and have been hit during what's just recently happened that really need focused on. Like what the residents or the business? The residents. Explain that. Like, um, you know, little small communities within the community. So you uh-huh. have, you have like in Baton Rouge, we have Baton Rouge, but we also have Cartier and in Scotland and all that. Yeah. So that's what I meant. Oh, as in, oh, well, first of all, we're only as strong as the weakest side of our city. So I can't, I can't sign off on, on plans that don't include the whole city. Right. You know, if we're going to do something for one part of the city, we've got to make sure that we're not building a three-legged horse because a three-legged horse can't win no race. We've, we got, we got to make sure that all four feet on the ground and that we have all 10 toes in the dirt you know what I'm saying? Going. We can't we can't afford to just build one side of the city because the north side and the north and central uh, are what the interstates run through. The I-10 runs through north and central Lake Charles. So we've got to really through north Lake Charles. But we've got to really take take more attention and do whatever it takes, offer tax incentives, offer, you know, offer anything we can to get those businesses there and work with the people who own the property to put something there that makes sense because we're not passing the eye test. We're not passing the eye test. They'll, they'll stop in Jennings, driving west. They'll stop in Iway and stop in Jennings. And when they and, and when they they'll come to uh, Lake Charles, they'll go straight to Sulphur. <laughs> and and, and when they're driving through, if they want to stop in Sulphur and they miss something, they'll cross that bridge in Lake Charles and they ain't stopping till Iway. We got to be a destination and not a pass through. That's the biggest thing. We've got to be a destination and stop being a pass through. And we, we can only do that on purpose. All right. It's the only way we do that. I know the downtown area, um, I, I always like going down to the downtown area because it just gave the small, like the small area, the small feeling. Right. And so how would you be able to keep that small feeling while still getting more businesses in that area? Well, I don't know about the small feel. Downtown is always going to feel small. 
uh, because it's small. You know, but what but what but what hasn't happened is we haven't had a focus on downtown in a while. They did a little bit of something and then we haven't seen anything happen since. So one easy thing that I can do to start it off, just to get the eyes on the city, on, on downtown, is to uh close down, shut down the streets, make it walkable once a month. Have uh vendors come out, line the streets, and have some entertainment out there, because you know that's what I know. Uh, because activity breeds activity. So if we get people coming down to downtown, then people can see how viable it is. And once we got traffic going to downtown, businesses are going to then now want to come to downtown and, and build in downtown. And then now we got the downtown area building up and moving and, and, and uh, becoming a nicer, stronger tax base for the entire city. Would, would you as mayor be interested in creating like another festival? So, you know, I, oh, one hundred percent. Because we used to be this, this we outside of New Orleans, we were the second largest city. We had the second most festivals outside of New Orleans. We got to get that back. We got to become festival city behind New Orleans. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I don't think we can beat New Orleans because they're bigger and they have more. They have more space. But we need to get reclaim our our number two position, which is number one when you're coming from Texas. <laughs> yeah, that that's correct. That is correct. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And I know what a lot of youth in Lake Charles, because I do have cousins who live there, um, they need a place to go. They need more places to go. Some of their right. community centers have not been functioning the way they should have been. Right. And so they need places to go to not deal in stuff that they shouldn't be dealing with. Uh, what you asking? <laughs> <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm asking is what... Uh, as as a mayor, what would you want to do with those community centers? Not not oh, the community the centers. Places. Yeah. Okay, so check this out. Um, uh, the current administration uh, has been a part of a move to uh, offload uh, the the parks and uh, most a lot of our parks and recreation centers to the parish. So we don't really have them all anymore. But we still have a, a um, community services and a community development department. And uh, I want to refund those because he had defunded them and uh, get those working again and work. And the, uh, the, the, uh, the, part, the, the, the properties that the city took over, the, the parish took over, work with the parish to make sure that the events still happen. Right. You know, because we got to stop fighting. We got to stop fighting with our big brother, the parish. Well, I thank you for being here. Um, it was very good. It was very good talk. And um, I'm grateful that actually I know you now. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, and you know what? Before you go, you didn't ask about the music. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I thank you for the, you know, for the, the politics thing. But do you have a question about the music before we go? With music, uh, it's just, are, are y'all trying to steal Zotico from St. Landry Parish? No. That's no. How will we steal Zydeco from St. Landry Parish? Because that's that's my home, and we the Zydeco's capital, and we're going to stay that way. Yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> there will be the Creole capital. Well, all right, the Creole capital. It's, it's semantics. It's semantics. It's, what, it's all what you call it. With, <laughs> but with Zydeco, um, you have Houston's, you have Texas Zydeco, and you got all these people from Texas, Corey, Corey Broussard, all of them. But Lake Charles, you have the big names. You got Chris Aldwine, you got Sean Aldwine, you have you have little Nate, you have all these big names. So will Zodico be the one that that pushes Lake Charles into the front eye again? Not just with the people who listen to Zodico, but with the people who don't. Oh, 100 percent Because like I said, Keith is from Keith is from right outside of Lake Charles. He's close to Lake Charles and it's Lafayette. Uh you got Chris, you got me, Queen Ida's from here, Rock and Sydney was from here. You know what I'm saying? Rusty lives here. I mean, so everybody, you know, everybody who's doing it, man, it's, it's, it's mostly from this area. Not Chris lives in Lafayette now. We lost that, right. to Lafayette, you know, but still. But we have the history here that we can we can uh, we can capitalize on the Creole. And um, I think we can make a shake and, and it'd be a really nice thing. I can't wait to see the biggest Zotico festival down there. You know, well, that, that already was happening with the uh, chicken run. Mm -hmm. So. Hey. Well, uh, that's all the questions I have for you today. Uh, if, if, well, where, where can people go if they have any questions for you, honestly? 
uh, for the cap for the for the for the campaign stuff, Sean for mayor.com, S E A N for mayor.com. For the music stuff, S E A N A R D O I N dot <laughs> 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 com. <laughs> Well, thank you for joining me today, and I know you have to go. So um, if you have any final words, you can say them now. Hey, this is what I want to tell y'all. I have a, when I motivational speak, I tell everybody, you got to see it. You got to say it and you got to get to work. So you have to see your vision clearly. You got to say it morning and at night. And if you remember during the day, say it so that you can get it. Because when you speak it, the atmosphere has to shift to make it come to happen. And then you got to get to work because nothing happens if you don't get to work. Everything I've ever gotten in my lifetime has been from that formula. See it, say it, get to work. If you do that, you will get what you what you ask for, what you work for, if you don't quit. So that's it. Et merci, uh, M. Sean Audouin, et je vous souhaite de passer un bon temps aujourd'hui. Et merci à tous les gens pour regarder la Creole Show. Uh, à la prochaine. C'est bon. <laughs>